We pulled the, the uh, driver's license picture of Mr. Beltran and it matched the person who had walked in with uh, Maricela to that 7-Eleven that morning. She's like with the knife coming down like this. And once I noticed the knife, that's why I pushed Lisa off of her. Did you go into a moment stab Marissa? No. Did you struggle with Marissa? No, absolutely not. No. Did you argue with Chuck about Marissa? No. Had you ever met Marissa? No. Most of us have heard the phrase, wrong place at the wrong time. Someone who suffers from some sort of tragedy simply because they were unlucky enough to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. This case is a perfect example of that. Someone who is just trying to live her life and have fun somehow got caught in the crossfires of two people in the middle of a nasty, contentious situation. But before we get into the case, if you wear glasses, you are going to want to hear from today's sponsor, GlassesUSA.com. If you haven't already heard, GlassesUSA.com is one of the biggest eyewear retailers in the U.S., offering thousands of eyeglasses and sunglasses, offering pretty much any style and color of glasses you can imagine. And the best part about GlassesUSA.com is the price point. Glasses start at just $39, which is up to 70% off of retail prices. They offer some of my favorite brands, such as Amelia E, which is the super cute pair that I'm wearing right now. I like to wear these on a daily basis. They don't have a prescription, but they do have the blue light blocking coating, so I like to wear them when I'm on my computer. I also have a pair of these super cute Amelia E sunglasses, but they also offer designer brands like Gucci, Oakley, and Ray-Ban, which is another one of my favorite brands. I have these super cute sunglasses in their rose gold color, which I have been loving for everyday wear. But if you're like me and you normally wear contacts throughout the day and your glasses at night, don't worry, they've got you covered. GlassesUSA.com is also the perfect place to stock up and save on your contact lenses. You can get 25% off all contact lens brands, including Vista, AccuView, Dailies, Bioinfinity, which is what I wear, and so, so many more. They are available with any prescription and for all uses. Now, when it comes to online shopping for eyeglasses, the endless choices can feel overwhelming. But GlassesUSA.com also offers a virtual try-on tool, which makes it so much easier to figure out what style of glasses you like and what looks best on you. Also, shopping online at GlassesUSA.com is risk-free with free shipping and returns with a 100% money-back guarantee within 14 days. So give GlassesUSA.com a tryout for yourself. GlassesUSA.com is offering exclusive discounts only available for 24 hours. Just click the links at the top of the description box below to get all of the details. Thank you again so much to GlassesUSA.com for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, I am going to be removing my glasses for the remainder of the video. I know that the glare is bothersome for some people and I don't want it to be distracting away from the case. With that being said, let's get into the case. Today, we are going to be discussing the tragic case of Maricela Botea Valadez. 23-year-old Maricela Botea Valadez is originally from Seattle, Washington, and was living with her parents and younger brother at the time. She was described as being outgoing, fun to be around, and vivacious. It was by October 2nd, 2020, when Maricela decided to take a break from her life in Seattle and flew to Dallas, Texas to visit a friend. Once in Dallas, she visited Raul Ortiz, someone she did have a past relationship with, but after breaking it off, the two remained friends and they wanted to visit each other. That weekend, Maricela had plans to hang out with Raul and other friends, go out drinking, and just have a good time like a 23-year-old does. Raul and Maricela spent pretty much the entire day of October 4th, 2020, eating out and drinking, so that by the time they went back to his apartment that evening, Raul was out for the count. He drank way too much and was throwing up by the time they got to his apartment. Not only that, but he didn't have his keys with him. He lost them, so he had no way of getting back inside. It was kind of a disaster, kind of a hilarious situation to happen when you're out drinking with your friends. Just everything wrong that could possibly happen happened. So Raul ended up passing out and sleeping it off on the balcony outside of his apartment. But by that point, Maricela still wanted to make the most of her time in Dallas. So instead of staying at the apartment, she got herself an Uber and went out by herself, arriving in Deep Elm to go bar hopping. Meanwhile, again, Raul stayed at home, sleeping through the night, expecting to wake up the next morning to his friend coming back to the apartment, but that isn't what happened. 
by the morning of October 5th, Raul woke up and found that Maricela had never returned. At first, he figured that she might have still been out. Maybe she slept at someone's place or passed out somewhere. After all, he had also passed out somewhere. He tried calling and texting her repeatedly, but he was getting absolutely no response. It was very out of character for her not to respond, so Raul started to get a very bad feeling about this. Later that same day, Maricela missed her flight back home. Once again, this was a huge red flag. She had work, she had family to see, she had a lot going on at home, so her just missing her flight and not returning home was very concerning. Raul called Maricela's parents, who were immediately concerned for her well-being. They knew that there was no way that she would have just stayed out, not return back to the apartment, and then just miss her flight back home without contacting anybody. So, it was at that time when Raul called the Dallas Police Department to report her as a missing person. After getting the report, the first thing police did to search for Maricela was obviously to go to the area where she was last known to be. They went all around the bars in Deep Ellum, where they found various surveillance cameras that picked up Maricela's movements from that night. In one of these videos, Maricela is seen standing on the sidewalk outside of Select Start Bar, talking to an unknown man at around 1.15 a.m. Earlier that night, Maricela had posted a Snapchat of herself wearing a super cute metallic purple dress. That was the same dress that she was wearing on that surveillance video. It is shown that she then leaves the bar, presumably with that unknown man. At the same time that she was seen on surveillance video, police also took a look at her cell phone records to see if she had been in communication with anyone before or after her disappearance. They found that the last time she used her phone was at around 4 a.m. on October 5th. After that, there is no communication. Once again, Marcella is 23 years old. She was constantly calling and texting people, always posting on social media. It was very unusual for her to just randomly stop posting and stop communication. Beyond that, in the days after her disappearance, there was also no activity on her bank accounts either. As the days turned into weeks without finding Marcella, her lack of phone and bank activity just grew more and more concerning. At this point, family and friends of Maricela, as well as investigators, all knew that something horrible must have happened to her. Soon after looking into that surveillance video of Maricela, police were able to identify the man she was seen with. They believed the man to be 30-year-old Charles Beltran. At the time, Charles was known to be a flirtatious ladies' man. He was also an aspiring rapper who was trying to get a rap career off the ground. As he was doing that, he was working as a doorman for a local bar in Deep Ellum. He did have a bit of a criminal record with multiple arrests involving drugs. In 2007, he was arrested for aggravated robbery. In this case, authorities said that he pistol whipped a man after taking his wallet. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison for this, but was released after only four months. In 2013, he was arrested for being a felon in possession of a firearm, spending 46 months in prison for that. Then, by 2018, he had spent another eight months in prison for violating his probation from that 2013 stint after a failed drug test. So, he did have a history which was concerning to authorities because, again, he was the last person known to be seen with Marcella. On the night of October 4th, it was said that Charles wasn't working or anything. He was just out partying, having fun with his own friends. It was at some point in that night when Marcella happened to bump into Charles and started chatting with him. But after identifying Charles as a person of interest, police were not able to locate him. They went to his last known address, but he was nowhere to be found. They tried reaching out to him, but he didn't answer. Police then tried contacting friends and family members known to Charles, but even his family told police that Charles went dark. He had disconnected all of his social media, and no one was able to reach him, even his closest family members. Because of this, Police did put out a notice identifying Charles as a person of interest, stating that they just wanted to speak with him in relation to the disappearance. But even after identifying Charles and putting forth their best efforts to find him, they struggled for the months that followed. Their investigation continued, which I will get more into in just a few minutes, but for quite some time, Maricela's family were left with absolutely no 
answers. That was until March 24th, 2021, when human remains were discovered in a wooded area near East Belt Lane and Post Oak Roads in Wilmer, Texas. At the time, the remains were so heavily decomposed that an identification couldn't initially be made. A few days after the discovery, however, the remains were positively identified as belonging to 23-year-old Maricela. Of course, this discovery was just horrific for her family. It confirmed their absolute worst fears about what happened to their beloved daughter and sister. Now, by this point, police had started gaining access to Charles's cell phone records to see who he was in contact with in the days surrounding Maricela's disappearance, and that is when they found 57-year-old Lisa Jones Dykes. Now, the relationship between Charles and Lisa is a complicated one. Lisa met Charles when he was working as a doorman at the same club that Lisa's son was working at. I believe the son was Charles's manager. When she met him, she immediately clocked him as a ladies' man. Working as a doorman, Charles did not make a lot of money. Again, he was trying to get his rap career started while making like $100 a night working at the club. He didn't really have the means to take care of himself. Meanwhile, Lisa, a much older woman than him, she had a lot of money. So, after the two met, she started taking him to fancy, expensive dinners. She started buying him gifts and just giving him this extravagant lifestyle that he had never dreamed possible. As this progressed, their relationship turned physical and romantic. Eventually, Lisa provided Charles with a nice car, a place to live, and even a studio for him to record his music. In return, he provided her with companionship and intimacy. As her relationship progressed with Charles, Lisa got a lot closer with a longtime friend of hers, Nina Morano. At the time, Nina's husband had recently died, so she was in a vulnerable state and needed somebody to lean on. That is when Lisa and Nina started to grow closer and closer as friends until their relationship also turned romantic and physical. Soon enough, the two were dating, and after that relationship started, Lisa and Nina got married. But when they got married, they did so with the understanding that Charles would remain a part of their relationship. Charles would be involved in the physical and emotional parts of their relationship, meaning that he would be dating the both of them. He was someone they could rely on, and they were people that Charles could lean on as well. At the time, all three of them lived together in one home. So now going back just a bit in the timeline. After Marcella's disappearance, again, police identified Charles and tried locating him. In doing so, they went to the home where he lived with Lisa, where they actually spoke with her and inquired about his whereabouts. Of course, she said she didn't know where he was. In fact, she hadn't had any contact with him in several weeks. As we know, for the months after the disappearance, police had nothing else to go on. They hadn't found her body, so even though they were looking for Charles and they knew he lived with Lisa, there wasn't too much more they could do. However, after the body was found, that is when they got a hold of the cell phone records and found more communication between Lisa and Charles. They were also able to trace their locations in the days surrounding Maricela's death. They found that in the early morning of October 5th, Maricela, Lisa, Nina, and Charles were all at their home in Mesquite at the same time. They found that all the data on Maricela's phone stopped at around 8 a.m. on the 5th while she was still at the Mesquite home. Meanwhile, that same morning, police found that Lisa's phone left the home and pinged in a wooded area in Wilmer, Texas. As we know from earlier, that is around the same location where Maricela's body would later be found. At this time, police were also able to obtain and execute a search warrant on the home. They actually did this two times with about a month between each search. Now, the first search they did was back in October of 2020, so before Maricela's body was found. This search was done only a few weeks after Lisa renewed her lease on her home. I mention that because when they did this search, the home looked abandoned. It looked like everyone within that home had just up and left, which again, would be very unusual if you just renewed your lease on that home. When they returned for their second search, they immediately noticed a strong smell of bleach. It was clear that the home had been extensively cleaned between the first and second search. However, they didn't get rid of everything. They found some brown and red streaks along the carpet, and after testing it, it came back as being blood. 
Upon DNA testing, the blood was confirmed as belonging to Maricela. After finding out this information after Maricela's disappearance and especially picking up after her body was found, Lisa and Nina were making moves to sell off their personal belongings as fast as possible. Now, when Lisa first got into contact with Nina to start their relationship, Nina was actually living in Pennsylvania. After they started talking, that is when Nina moved to Texas to be with Lisa. Well, shortly after Maricela's disappearance, Nina got into contact with her realtor in Pennsylvania and urged her that she needed to get rid of her property urgently. Then they found that the black Audi Charles had been driving, which again had been gifted to him by Lisa, had been shipped from Texas to Pennsylvania. Then it was taken to New York and sold. But lucky enough for police, they were able to track the car down to the dealership and intercept the car before it was given to its new owner. They completed forensic testing on the car and found two interesting things in their testing. First, they did find that there was a hair within that trunk. According to sources I have read, the hair was tested. However, I don't think the results of that testing have been released. Second, they found a bit of concrete material in the car. Now, the wooded area where Maricela's body was found was actually right next to a concrete plant. The type and color of the concrete found in that Audi matched the concrete found at that plant near the woods where the body was discovered. That means that the Audi most likely was in that area of the woods at some point, again, coincidentally, the same woods where Maricela's body would later be found. As police continued to work to track down these three individuals, they found that Lisa, Nina, and Charles all spent time moving between Louisiana, Pennsylvania, Florida, Utah, and Mexico. Police tried to follow them and pin them down to a location, but these guys did not make this chase easy. Dallas police eventually worked with Florida law enforcement agencies to track them down because they figured out that they were there for an extended period of time. And eventually they did find Nina on March 25th, 2021. She had recently started renting a new apartment in Miami, so that is where officers spotted her and arrested her. While police were in the process of finding and arresting Nina, Lisa had also been at that apartment, but she made a run for it. She booked it out of the building and called family members to give her money for an Uber or Lyft to Orlando. She did actually make it to Orlando, but once there, she continued using her own cell phone. By March 26th, police were able to track her down to the Orlando Mall, where she was in the process of purchasing a new cell phone. Too little, too late. After taking Lisa into custody, police searched her cell phone and found that she had been texting different people and trying to coordinate plans to get her and Nina out of Florida as quickly as possible. She was also in contact with Charles, who she was planning on meeting up with soon. After Nina was arrested, Lisa was trying to get into Nina's bank account and take funds from there to try and gather enough money for her and Nina to make a run for it. After arresting Lisa, finally, by April 2nd, 2021, law enforcement officers were able to track Charles down to Utah where they arrested him. All three individuals were extradited to Dallas where they had their bail hearings. At the time, both Nina and Lisa were released on a $500,000 bail while Charles remained in jail. This was because Charles was being charged with Marcella's murder while Nina and Lisa were not. When released, of course, both women were to wear their electronic monitoring devices and had to stay within Dallas County. But that isn't what happened. Immediately upon their release, Lisa and Nina got to work. They created an LLC to make it appear that they were scouting agents for new up-and-coming artists. They then applied for passports, then got visas to Cambodia under their LLC, saying that they were scouting for talent there. By December 25th, 2021, both Nina and Lisa submerged their ankle monitors until they stopped emitting their signals and then cut them off. That same morning, these two women boarded a flight to Cambodia. By December 27th, that is when the pretrial services department noticed that the monitors were no longer giving off their signals, so they issued new arrest warrants for Lisa and Nina. 
At this point, the FBI became involved with local law enforcement to work with officers in Cambodia. They figured out this whole LLC scheme and they figured out that they used that to then, you know, get their visas to Cambodia and book flights there. So ultimately, they were able to locate Nina and Lisa, arresting them and extraditing them back to Dallas once again. This time, they were both charged with murder and given a $4 million bail. Right now in this case, all three individuals are charged with Maricela's murder and were indicted by a grand jury. It is assumed that since Charles was the one who met Maricela and brought her home and presumably slept with her, that he was the one who was like leading this whole thing, that he was probably the one who physically murdered her. But given that Lisa and Nina were both home when it happened, they must have either known or been involved in some way. There was still so much more to this case that they needed to piece together to figure out what each person's involvement was. But after the arrests, Charles spoke with officers and gave them a very different version of events than anybody could have expected. And he really put the entire case together. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Charles and Lisa had a very transactional relationship. Charles would be a companion for Lisa while Lisa funded his life and supported his rap career. At first, it was great, but then he said that Lisa started treating him almost like a toy for her. She started insisting that he move in with her, so eventually he did. Then she insisted that he join in with her and Nina's sexual relations, so he also did that. But for the duration of his relationship with Lisa, and even after the trio formed and they reached this agreement, Charles was free to see other women. He had always been this party boy, so he would often go out and talk to women and bring them home. Lisa was well aware of this. But as time progressed and their relationship progressed, Lisa started getting more and more possessive and jealous. She started to get sick of Charles seeing other women. She felt that he wasn't giving her enough attention. She had been spending all of this money on him. She was spoiling him and giving him everything he could ever want, but he wasn't giving her the attention she felt she deserved. Eventually, Lisa asked Charles to stop bringing home other women but he ignored her and continued to do it anyways. By October 3rd, so the day before Charles met Maricela, Charles performed at a rap show in Arkansas with Lisa right there to support him. This whole trip was funded by Lisa. They paid to get Charles that spot to perform. She paid for a bus and transportation of the equipment. She paid for the hotel room, their meals while there, and everything else they did those days. By the time they all returned back to Dallas, Lisa wanted to stay home and relax after their big event. But Charles was not ready to stop partying. He wanted to go out on October 4th and celebrate this big show he just did. He and his friends were at their normal hangout spot in the city when Maricela approached him. The two started talking and they quickly connected. She was asking him if he knew of anyone that could get her weed and he said that he had some at his house. So she went home with him where they continued drinking and smoking weed. Eventually, the two hooked up. After that, Maricela fell asleep with Charles in his bed. However, after falling asleep, according to Charles, in the early morning hours of October 5th, he woke up to the feeling of the bed shaking and rattling. He then heard Maricela start screaming for help. And that is when he saw that Lisa had entered his room got on the bed and straddled Maricela and started stabbing her repeatedly. Charles pushed Lisa off of the bed and while doing so, both she and Maricela fell off the bed and onto the floor. He then grabbed Lisa and pinned her to the wall and asked her what she was doing. Lisa responded, I told you not to bring any more girls over here. I'm getting tired of this shit. Why are you disrespecting us? You need to get your little expletive and leave now. But as she was saying that and through all of the commotion of this whole thing, he looked at Marcella and found that she was lying there completely still and lifeless. Lisa had murdered Marcella. After this, Charles left the room, splashed some water on his face and washed his hands. When he came back into the room, he said that he was leaving and she said she would handle the situation. In the days that followed, Charles went about his life as normal. 
Now, at the time, as if Charles's relationships weren't complicated enough, apparently he also had a girlfriend who he had been dating for several months. According to her, Charles acted completely normally in the days following Maricela's death, except for the fact that he insisted on only staying at hotels. He then told his girlfriend that he really wanted to go to New Orleans for a vacation, so they hopped in an SUV and drove to New Orleans that night. They spent one night there, but while there, Charles took a call in private. The girlfriend didn't hear what the call was about, but as soon as he hung up, his whole demeanor changed. He said that he needed her to go back to Dallas without him. He then told her to drop the SUV off at the house in Mesquite. She did that and then returned back to Louisiana to pick Charles up. The two then drove to Pennsylvania together, and then during this time, the girlfriend did notice a change in his behaviors. He started raising his voice and talking to her in a way that he never had before. He was never known to be violent or have angry outbursts towards her, so when he raised his voice at his girlfriend, it really freaked her out. Once they got to Pennsylvania, he told his girlfriend that his lawyers were going to pick him up. According to the girlfriend, she knew of Lisa and Nina, but she thought that they were just his lawyers. He never once mentioned that they had any sort of sexual relationship together. Now, I will note that Nina is actually a lawyer, but again, she had no idea that they were all in this three-person relationship together, and I don't even know if she knew that they were living together. Now, while Charles was with his girlfriend in New Orleans and Pennsylvania, Lisa got Nina to help her with cleaning up the mess she left at home. They took Marcel's body and disposed of her in that wooded area in Wilmer before cleaning up the home with bleach. They also packed up their belongings and got out of that house. According to Charles, after being in New Orleans with the girlfriend, that is when his picture was released to the public, identifying him as the last known person to be with Maricela. So that is why he started traveling from state to state. Of course, he did all of this traveling with Lisa's help. He was also able to get a passport with her help. But of course, during all of this, police watched their movements, found Maricela's body, and finally tracked them down before they were able to leave. After telling police all of this, they asked Charles why he didn't call the police to report this horrific crime initially, especially if he was just a witness and not the person who committed it. He said that since he does have a criminal record, he didn't want to be blamed for a crime he didn't commit. He said that he knew police would look at him as the bad guy. Meanwhile, he was in a relationship with an attorney who he thought could handle it. So, instead of turning Lisa in, he ran and let her take care of the rest. Of course, all of this is just such a wild story. However, it does seem to make sense based on what we've heard about the relationship between Lisa and Charles. And we know that Lisa and Nina's phones were found in the area where her body would later be found, so it's very likely that they did hide her body. Based on all of the information that I've told you up to this point, Lisa Dykes was indicted on her murder charges. Her trial started almost three years after Maricela's murder in December of 2023. The prosecution was basically arguing the story that I told you up to this point, that Lisa and Charles had this weird transactional relationship, which eventually developed into a trio. At first, Lisa was okay with Charles meeting other women and bringing them home for hookups, but eventually, Lisa grew tired of this and wanted Charles to herself. She told him to stop bringing women over, but he didn't listen. So, on that fateful night in October of 2020, Lisa took her pent-up anger out on Maricela, an innocent 23-year-old who never could have known that going home with this man she just met would result in her murder. And not only was it not at his hands, but it was at the hands of this random woman who he had been living with, who she had no idea was even involved with him to begin with. Now, Charles did take the stand to testify for the prosecution at Lisa's trial. He explained everything I just told you under oath. Tell me what happens next. I wake up to her screaming, saying, help me, help me. And I, I look up and I, I guess just from all the movement going on in the bed, that's when I wake up and I see Lisa on top of her. What does she do? She's like with the knife coming down like this. And 
once I noticed the knife, that's when I pushed Lisa off of her. And what happens when you push Lisa off of her? I mean, I, I, just my reaction was just to push her, and I pushed her hard, and her and Maricela, like, tumble over and fall towards the, where the window's at right there. They fall towards the end of the bed. Uh, Lisa still got a hold of her. As I get up, I'm still trying to process what the hell is going on. I see Lisa still grabbing her. I, I jump over the bed, and as I come over to the bed, I'm trying to pry Lisa off of her, pull her apart. And um, Lisa got to, like, her hair or something to where she can't. She's trying to, like, get off of her. And I'm trying to pry, pry them apart. You know how if, like, if, if you hold something and somebody's trying to pull and you like, let it go? Yes. Like she, um, Maricela just ends up, as, as I'm pulling them off, it's like Lisa just kind of like let go and she just tumbles over. She tumbles over and she falls on the bed. I mean, I look, that's why I look, I look behind me. She falls on the bed and I, I look towards Lisa and I grab Lisa and I pin her to the wall and I'm like, what the F is... What the hell are you doing, you know? And she's like, I told you not to bring any more girls over here. What else did she say? She's like, I'm just getting, I'm getting tired of this. She was just, she just said that, I told you not to bring any more girls over here. Why are you disrespecting us? I do everything for you. And she was just like, you need to get your little, say it. Your little bitch and y'all need to leave, the, leave now. Y'all need to leave. What did you say to her? That's what I said. I said that's all you had to fucking say, you know. And as I I turn I, as I turn around, I'm I'm fixing to tell Maricela like let's go, and she's just she's just there. Like I said, he was originally charged with murder. However, after the trial started and he agreed to testify. Both his and Nina's murder charges were officially dropped. Instead, they were both only left with charges of tampering with a corpse. Because of this, the defense tried to discredit Charles's story. The defense was arguing that Lisa was not guilty. She took no part in the murder. At the trial, Lisa had a different version of what her relationship with Charles was like. She said that it was basically just like a business investment. She bought him that car, tried supporting him and his rap career so that once he went big and made a lot of money, she would benefit financially. But of course, that isn't how it worked out. So there wasn't this romantic relationship with them, there was no jealousy, and she didn't care who Charles brought home. She claimed that she wasn't even home at the night of the murder. Not only that, but she didn't even know anything that happened until the FBI contacted her. When she was asked about why she was in the area of where Maricela's body was found on the morning after her murder, Lisa said that her and Nina were actually at a FedEx office nearby trying to get some documents. But the package she wanted wasn't there, so she returned back home. She said that the reason they fled after being arrested was because they didn't want to be all caught up in a crime they didn't commit. It did not show that they were guilty. She went on to describe Charles as a violent person who beat his dog and carried a gun on him at all times. She said that he could blow up at the smallest things, so he was the one who murdered Maricela that night. As far as these women, uh, you heard him say, hey, he brought women over there all the time. Is that true? He did. He would bring not one, sometimes two, three. And did guys some, sometimes come with them too? Absolutely. They'd be back up in that studio, right? Absolutely. Uh, they were doing their thing, you were doing your thing? Yes. On that day, did you ever come, come in contact with uh, Maricela? No. When Chuck arrived there with her, according to the phone reference, mm -hmm. in the early morning hours, did you ever know he was there? No. You heard him say that uh, at some point you came into that room and you stabbed Maricela. Did you go into that room and stab Marcel? No. Did you struggle with Marcel? No, absolutely not. No. Did you argue with Chuck about Marcel? No. Had you ever met Marcel? No. This whole Chuck Marcella ordeal, how did you find out about it? 
I found out about it whenever the FBI agent showed up and called me on the phone. The defense brought up how Charles did lie about the night in question when he was first arrested, saying that he knew nothing of what happened. They also talked about how he had his murder charges dropped in exchange for his testimony, which makes him a lot less credible. He has a motive for testifying. He's going to get less jail time because of it. Therefore, he might just be making things up to get himself out of this. The defense also brought up how there was no evidence of stabbing present on Maricela's body, which was technically true. By the time she was found, she was basically just a skeleton, so technically, there was no concrete evidence to point towards her cause of death. Therefore, who knows if she was even stabbed to begin with. However, there were multiple witnesses who testified at trial who all said that Charles is not a violent person. He is someone who avoids conflict and tries to solve his problems with words, not violence. Meanwhile, even though Lisa doesn't have a criminal record, she was known to take advantage of people. Some people said that she only married Nina because she was a wealthy attorney. Others said that they saw how possessive Lisa was over Charles. She was known to be quick to anger anytime Charles did anything she didn't approve of. There was also one time where Nina and Charles slept together without Lisa, and one witness describes that Lisa became absolutely furious. So again, that just shows that there was a romantic element to their relationship, unlike what Lisa was claiming. Not only that, but Lisa was possessive and was jealous about certain things that Charles was doing. At the end of the trial, which lasted seven days, both sides made their closing arguments and the jury went off for deliberations. After two hours of deliberation, the jury came back and found that Lisa Dykes is in fact guilty of Maricel's murder as well as for charges of tampering with a human corpse. For the murder, she was sentenced to life in prison and for her other charge, she was given an additional 20 years in prison. Ms. Dykes, please stand. The first verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, having heretofore found the defendant, Lisa Jo Dykes, guilty of the offense of murder as charged in the indictment and not having found by a preponderance of the evidence that such offense occurred while the defendant was under the immediate influence of sudden passion arising from adequate cause, assess her punishment at life in the institution, institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice and a fine of $10,000. The second verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, having found the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of the offense of tampering with physical evidence as charged in the indictment, assess her punishment at confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for 20 years. Lisa Jo Dykes, in conforming with the jury's verdict, I hereby sentence you to life in prison and a fine of $10,000. In cause number F217565, tampering with physical evidence, I sentence you to 20 years in prison and a, and a fine of $10,000. As of right now, both Charles and Nina are awaiting their trials for the charges of tampering with a corpse. Originally, they were supposed to take place in April of this year, but as far as I've been able to find, the trials have not yet taken place and we don't know when they're supposed to happen. As with any case that is left with any loose ends, I will keep you all updated on when we know about this trial and what happens with it, most likely by updating the description box of this video or maybe by sharing it on social media, but... Again, stay tuned. I will let you all know if any more information comes out about this case regarding those trials. But as of right now, that is all of the information that I have on today's case. Of course, this was an absolutely wild ride. The way this all happened was just so unexpected, yet tragic and heartbreaking. Maricela obviously didn't deserve any of this. She never could have guessed that Charles was living with this jealous, possessive older woman with whom he had this strange arrangement. She was simply at the wrong place at the wrong time and knowing that is just so tragic. My heart absolutely goes out to her family, friends, and especially that friend who she was there to visit. I'm sure he feels horrible about the whole situation. Of course, none of this is his fault, but I can't imagine having a friend visit me in my state and then they go out without me because I got too drunk and they end up being murdered. 
that has to be such a traumatic thing to go through and I just hope he's okay at the end of all of this. I am very happy that Lisa is behind bars and I'm very much hoping that everyone else involved in this case gets the time they deserve. But with that being said, I am so, so curious to hear what you all think about this whole case. Do you believe Charles's story? Do you think Lisa truly is the one who stabbed Maricela or do you think it was really Charles and he just came up with this wild story? What do you think of their charges being dropped? Do you think that his testimony was enough to get Lisa convicted? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Spotify. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.